Hello, I'm Brandi Agerbeck of Loosetooth.com and it is the beginning of November 5th, 2015. I'd like to tell you what the heck I did with October 2015. My last video was at the beginning of the month and I was going a little stir crazy in my writing cave <laughs> working on my second book. Um, October was Inktober, Drawtober, and the Big Draw, which is a celebration of drawing across the United Kingdom and um, other places around the world. And uh, the way I spent my Big Draw month or my October or my Inktober was working with graphic facilitation clients. It was a very busy month. And what I like is that that month brought four projects with four different industries in four different scenarios and four different levels of collaboration between my clients and I. So this video might be a little long, but I think it's a great illustration of the different types of projects that can use graphic facilitation and different ways you can engage with me as your graphic facilitator, different level levels of partnership. So the first project that month was a a consulting company who hired me to work with them for a day-long event where they invited clients um, who all worked in finance to an offsite. So it was sort of the idea was we're inviting you, we want both to present some specific information on this financial topic, but we also want to um, hear what you have to say about it and talk with each other. So these were all folks who had one very specific finance function within their company. So it's pretty lovely that this, com this consulting company gave, gave these folks a chance to talk to their colleagues. You know that if you have a specialized job, you know, you don't really have colleagues at work. So this is a nice chance for them to be able to talk to each other. So what they specifically asked me to do was map out the conversation that happened in the room, but also be mapping not so much the specifics of the presentations, but more things that are these overarching themes, these um, the sort of like um, overall ideas that they have to deal with every day when they go back to work. So they wanted less specificity and more commonality between the presentations and between um, the different folks who were there in the room really lovely use of graphic facilitation because I was thinking not so much about trying to duplicate the presentations, but how can I sort of add this layer of organization and overview um, that supplements the presentations that they'd get later and really help them remember what happened that day and what those conversations were. One of the ways I describe this work is you can use graphic facilitation for presentations and conversations. Uh, presentations would be something like this, where for the most part that day, the speakers at the front of the room were presenting to the whole group. Not a whole heck of a lot of that day was conversation. Conversation tends to be things like internal strategy meetings, where everyone is having one conversation with each other. I can map either. I gotta tell you, my favorite thing and the thing that has the most impact is more conversation. Um, but we'll look at the different ways that this works, the different proportions work through these four examples. So in this case, this is the, the, the little pie chart in each corner that tells you how much of the, of the day was presentation, the white section, and how much of it was uh, conversation, the sort of yellow green color. So in this case, uh, much more presentation. The setup of the room was pretty tricky. This is a big wild card whenever I do the work because of course I want to be visible. I want people to be able to see their own conversation take shape in front of them. Not so easy with this room. We had 35 folks in this room. It was pretty darn packed. The front of the room was the shorter wall and it was pretty much full of the screen that they were presenting on. And um, these were all windows, beautiful view. Didn't really want to like block the view and also you know, there's only, the windows are only so wide. A lot of stuff are along the back, along with a whole bunch of people standing in the back. So my best case in this room was a whiteboard that was hanging up in this corner. It was a little tall. <laughs> so I was sort of off in the corner, reaching up to the top of the paper, but it worked. Um, now it was most easily seen by these folks over here, but um, not so much seen by the other folks in the room. Thankfully, the room was small enough that there was still a sense of my presence. People could come up and take a look at the work on the break. Now, one of my favorite things to do over the course of the day is when these drawings are finished, to move them to another place in the room. So as those drawings accumulate over the day, the group gets a sense of accomplishment. I didn't have that option in this particular room given the windows, given the stuff on the back wall. So unfortunately, when I finished the first drawing, it got rolled up and tucked away. So it goes. 
So that was the first example. Again, a consulting company working with a financial topic, all these guests coming in from their finance roles from other companies. And um, again, I was looking for the commonalities in what they were saying and what was being presented. So that was project number one. Project number two, education. It was a university's master's program. And this was really lovely because this is a kind of project I've been asked to do more and more, and I absolutely love it. And I welcome more of it. It's what I describe as co-creation with your team. So this was a live event. This was a day I was up at the wall, real time, um, mapping these presentations and a little bit of conversation. In this case, it's not really, it's not exactly a live event. It's a, it's a full day, but what's happening is this master's program wanted a summary graphic that described all the different paths people took to come into their program and then the different paths they could take when they were in the program. And uh, thankfully I had done some work with them before and one of the directors said, hey, wait a second, if we got a complex thing and we're trying to create a visual, let's ask Brandy. So um, he called me up, we talked it through and I was excited because I love working with complexity and I love getting the chance to really work with a small group of people and figure out in a day what that image is and be able to create that image, create that image for that group. Now, the initial call, call I had with the director um, was also with the designer working on their, uh, their new marketing materials. And I said to them, um, you will end the day with a hand-drawn drawing, large-scale hand-drawn drawing that I've created. Now, if that's the style, if that's the object you want to promote your program, by all means use that hand-drawn drawing. But also what's happening that day is we're doing so much work to organize and refine our thinking and find the exact right wording to go on that image to promote your program. Now it could be that you say, wow, this structure works really well. We just don't want it in this hand-drawn style. By all means, hand that off to the designer and have them recreate it in a different way, in a different style that works for you. So, you know, not being so attached to that product. Now, if you want that product, excellent. You know, you will have a finished product you'll be able to use at the end of the day. The second thing we talked about in that prep call was how was this image going to be used? The original idea was we wanted an image to go in the center of a brochure. But then I said, hey, Really, ideally, we'd be creating an overview, a summary image that could be used for a lot of different, in a lot of different ways. It could be used on your website, in the brochure. Um, you could present with it, zooming in and out on specific ideas. So really, ideally, I'm creating something that works for that one function, but then is sort of evergreen and, and adaptive and able to use in a bunch of different ways. And they said, yes, please, <laughs> let's do that. So in this scenario, what happens is I arrive with a roll of paper and my markers and um, the first part of the day, I sit down with the team and ask a lot of questions. I put some paper up on the wall. So there's blank paper here. I'm sitting at the table. At the beginning of the day, I'm sitting with the table, sitting at the table with the group of folks. We had about seven people in the room this particular day. And as you can see from my pie chart over here, this was 100% conversation. And what happened was, um, I ask them clarifying questions. What are the objectives of this image? Uh, who's the audience? Are there different audiences? Are there different functions? Is there anything about those specific functions that, are, that is useful to know? Like for instance, with the brochure, what are the proportions? What kind of rough proportions are we working with? Um, then we talk about the content. I say, tell me about your program. What is it you're trying to express? And I'm taking notes and, um, and the, yeah, my notes at this point are just scribbly scrabbly text. <laughs> uh, but as I listen, there's a picture that starts forming in my head. So at a certain point, I say, okay, uh, let's take a break. And um, I think I've got a good shape in my head of what I think this should be. So folks take a break. I get up to this piece of paper on the wall and I use a light color marker and I sketch out the shape of the graphic. You know, what are, what are the pieces? What are the proportions of the pieces? How are they relating to each other on the page? And, um, and then I invite folks in and then I walk them through and I say, is this what you want? Is this what you need? Uh, and then they give me feedback. Now, part of it is making sure the right pieces are on the page. The next part of it is figuring out the exact content that's gonna go on that image. Because when I do a hand-drawn drawing, <laughs> it's also handwritten text. 
and that's hard to edit later. So this is a really nice exercise with the group to figure out, okay, what's the exact wording we want to express this story? I had one client I did this kind of work with before. She was a partner in a consulting company. She loved the fact that it was hard to edit the, image, edit the images because she was the decision maker. She was the one who knew what she wanted to present. And once it was drawn, it was done. So in that case, you know, it was she was very happy not to have like everyone trying to do their little edits and tweaks afterwards because she's like, got it. <laughs> so what is really important in these kind of events and these kind of projects is to have the right people in the room. You have to have the people who have the knowledge and are the decision makers. This does not work if there's indecisive folks or there's a lot of um, conflict or different things going on. Now, that wordsmithing and the content refinement is... Um, uh, I wouldn't say tricky, it's just, it's just a different kind of animal. And it really is about me working as the outsider to say, okay, what does that mean to me as an outsider? Does that language work? Um, asking folks, you know, does this, the, does this kind of language work for your audience? Lots and lots of facilitative questions around what is the shape of this image and what is the content on this image, all that good stuff. So I get a light sketch up on the board, and as I'm working, I work with, after a while, I start drawing things in at a darker color, and that kind of shows here's the next round or iteration of the decisions we're making. Um, so let's get those down in darker ink. Um, also, as we get the text decided, I'll draw that up on the board. Now, in this case, before I inked in the next iteration, like the final image, the client said, hey, can we see a pencil sketch first? by all means because i could understand that we had enough changes happen on that sheet of paper it was pretty hard to picture exactly what was what and there were some things sort of shifted in position and proportion so then what happened was um i think it was about lunchtime at that point they went to lunch i, I ate lunch we um i then went to start drawing in pencil once that pencil drawing was up i asked the client to come back and take a look at it and it was this very funny thing where they walk in the room and they look at this big sheet of paper on the wall and they're like, is she cuckoo? <laughs> it doesn't look like there's anything on the paper. I said, no, you got to get up close. You know, really, uh, one woman said, you know, is this the emperor's new clothes? <laughs> like, there's nothing here. And get close enough to the paper, you can see the pencil. And I do have to pencil it in very lightly because after I ink it in, I have to erase all of that so it photographs well. So another iteration talking about the pencil drawing. Does this work? We had one change on that chart, and then I inked it in and then I colored it in and then I photographed it and then I handed them the drawing. And in that day, they now had a summary graphic of their program that they could use to educate and invite people into this awesome program that they have. So this again is the co-creation with the team. Having the right people in the room, having the right scope, understanding what the heck you want that image to do. And then I love that it's a very, um, it's a conversation. It's not, it's not just the group having a conversation. It's I'm having a conversation with the group and really helping them refine and create and modify and blah, 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 this image <laughs> that's going to gonna, gonna um, summarize uh, their work. So again, it, it's really great because it helps clarify what they're thinking. It helps represent complexity. The proportion's important, the composition's important, the balance is important, the way somebody flow, the, the way somebody moves through the drawing or the flow is important, color choice is important, line weight is important. So again, you can tell I'm nerding out about this because this is my favorite stuff, but I get a chance to really co-create an image with that group to help them serve, uh, to serve that group and help them share their message. So that was project number two. Project number three was a internal meeting from a food and beverage company of about 20 people. And they were planning a big annual conference. Now, what I loved about this group, now see, this is also a fully green conversation circle. What I loved about this work, I'd worked with them plenty in the past. They knew how to use a graphic facilitator. They had a two day event. The first day was the presentation. The second day was the day that they were rolling up their sleeves and having the conversations about what they had learned the day before. So very smartly, they just hired me for the second day. And you know what? I'm perfectly fine with that. <laughs> so, so the team had worked together for the previous day. I come into the room the next day. It's a little tricky because it originally what they had was these tables set up here. You know, it's one of those um, hotel meeting rooms. It's kind of long, there's windows on one side. 
Um, long room, originally what they wanted was me to put my, my paper on this front wall. Two issues. One was it had spotlighting that was very, um, like really bright pools of light and then really dark. So it was going to be hard to see. It was going to be really lousy to photograph. And the second thing was there was all this kind of no man's land between those walls and the tables. Now, if the light had been better, I would have said, hey, let's, you know, scoot all these tables closer to this wall. But, you know, I said, you know, can we try a plan B? And we got a, we got a um, whiteboard that they put on easels. And what I did was I set it up here at this angle. So I, I kind of closed in this space so I didn't feel like I was a mile away. Um, and they could feel that it was sort of more integrated with the group uh, and also angled so that folks could see me. So in this case, again, 20 people, day long meeting, um, very, there was no facilitator. They were having their own conversation uh, and I was able to map the, map the conversation. Now, again, what I was saying here with being able to rehang hang up the finished drawings, what we did was once I was finished with the drawing, I hung them up on the wall here. So again, at the end of the day, they had three drawings that showed them how much work they had accomplished that day. So that's the third project. The fourth project back here was with a healthcare company and it was a big conference. It was 350 people. And, um, you know, this is even enough tables. It was a giant ballroom. You know, it was one of those ballrooms where, you know, thankfully this case, it was no windows, but it was a pretty light room. Often when I'm doing these kind of conferences, it's like they're like sleep, they're sitting in a cave for a day and it's so dark and I can't be seen. And uh, when this client called me, she said, you know, we're doing this leadership conference. Um, it's 350 people in the room. We're thinking that this might be a new way to engage folks as they're listening. Now, when she described the scale of the meeting, the number of people and the size of the room, I was frank with her. I said, you know, in this case, this in this little chart, pie chart in the corner here, the day was mostly presentation with just a small bit of table conversations. And I was frank with her and I said, you know, we can work together and I can, uh, <laughs> we can work together and here are ways that we can make sure I'm as seen as possible and how we can integrate the conversations that happen at the table with the rest of the day. So in this case, you know, just a matter of scale, I'm this little person at the front of the room at a little board and, you know, and there's 40 tables in this room. They've got a stage in the center and then there's four screens, projection screens across the front. So we did a couple things to help integrate what I was doing. Um, one was we had a videographer work with, um, they had a videography team, but we had one cameraman placed near me and he was tracking what I was doing on the board. Now out of these four screens, two of them would have the speaker and then two of them would change between what I was drawing and the slides. And um, it was fantastic. This videographer, he was fantastic. And at one point I go, you're doing an awesome job. And he said, well, I'm used to doing sports. <laughs> so like perfect now because there's certain points where I'm moving or you know I'm not moving that far but he zoomed in so he did a really fantastic job of tracking me as I went back and forth across this board and again like I said occasionally they would put it up on the screen so that gave people a sense of oh that's what that person's doing over there <laughs> at the front of the room because again only a couple people could really see what I was doing given the scale of the room another thing we did to help integrate the image images into the event was once I finished the drawing, like I said in these other examples, we took the drawing and we moved it out to the common area on the hallway where the coffee was set up. And we, we, when they introduced me in the morning, they said, Brandy will be doing these drawings, take a look at them out in the hallway. So it was just, people had a sense of, okay, I might not quite understand what she's doing right now, but on break, I'm gonna go check it out. So again, this is a little tricky with scale, but by having video and by having those images in a common area, it helped integrate what I was doing in the room. The third way we integrated, the, it, it integrated visuals into this giant conference was that um, there was one point in the day where they're having table conversations and I worked with my client about how to help take what they were saying at the tables and, and share them with the room at large. And what we ended up doing was creating a template of, um, of so it was, a, it was a paper template. It was about 32 inches square in this case. And it had four basic areas, four areas that they were talking about over the course of that discussion. And it's tricky. This is what I talked to the client about. I say, you want, you want the template to have enough shape 
that they feel that it guides their conversation, but not be so restrictive that they get into that fill in the box thinking. Like that's the death of, you know, I'm, I, I'm pretty ambivalent about templates and that's a huge reason why is that people just go into, okay, I'm just doing the assignment. They don't have a conversation. They get focused in on fill this, fill this, fill this, fill this. So again, it was designing the right template. So it was like kind of open enough that they could have a conversation around it, but again, structured enough that they were able to populate those four areas of that template. And then we use that to present back to the larger group. The client also had 40 of these um, templates from the tables that they could video, they could uh, photograph or you know use in their report. Or maybe it doesn't become part of the report, but they go, wow, there's a lot of really good information here. Let's go through these and see what we can call, you know, because here are 350 of our leaders telling the, telling us what their successes were and what their obstacles were and where they want to go next. So that's a really great feedback that would not have been captured if we had not had those paper templates on the table. So um, that was my October. <laughs> so again, four different group sizes from seven people working on a co-creation project of a summary graphic, uh, all the way up to 350 people at an annual conference, not a biannual conference, biennial conference, there's two a year, I can never keep that straight. Um, with a healthcare company. Again, four different industries. Um, some of it was internal, some of it was external. So this is completely an internal meeting. This was more inviting people in for a conference. Um, this was an internal meeting, but we were producing an external graphic to go to a wider audience. And again, hopefully through those stories, you get a sense of um, the different uses of graphic facilitation and also the different types of way you can engage with me as a graphic facilitator. Super excited that uh, next year I celebrate 20 years as a graphic facilitator. Love the variety of the work. Love this type of project especially, especially. So please, by all means, if you're thinking, wow, I don't really need her for a conference or a meeting, but we got this really complicated thing we need to visualize, you know where to find me. So um, again, I'm Brandy Agerbeck of loosetooth.com and uh, thank you so much for watching.